Hi everyone, today I'm talking about Whistle Mountain, which is a 2020 release board game designed by Scott Caputo and Luke Laurie. This one accommodates two to four players, takes about 90 minutes to play, and was published by Bezier Games. Now the main mechanism in this game is worker placement, as you have this, um, this main board here, and you have your own little player board with your little pieces. And the idea is you're trying to get as many points as you can in different ways, including um, building to the scaffolding, uh, adding machines onto the scaffolding, and sending your workers off to this, um, this kind of side ladder here. Um, the game is boiled down into two pretty simple actions, and I've just set up the board here just as an example. It's not going to start looking like this, but I thought it'd be a good way to explain how everything works. So the main action of your game is going to be to collect resources where you are going to place one of your three pieces, which are represented by these three different hot air balloons uh, of different sizes. So you've got your large one, you've got your medium sized one, and you've got your little one here. Now, just because it's smaller doesn't necessarily mean it's worse um, because it can actually manage to do things that the big ones can't do. But let's, uh, let's show how you actually collect your resources. So for example, I'll use this big one here and I can place it anywhere on the board, either on one of these machines, which are these tiles here, or next to one of these scaffoldings. So for example, if I place my piece here, it covers up three squares, and then whatever I'm touching, I'm gonna to get those resources. So in this example, I'm gonna get a, a whistle, a gold, and I'm gonna get one of these water drops as well. Now, if I wanted to place it somewhere else, say I wanted to place it here like this, then I would get a whistle, a whistle, and because I'm touching this machine, I would also get to use the ability of that machine. If I wanted to place it on the machine here, like this, I would not only get that ability by being able to trans transmute uh, a tools logo into uh, a building action, but I'd also get a whistle, a, um, a point because I'm touching it, and also get another whistle there. So it's a real bit of a spatial puzzle. And because I said, you know, the, the little ones can be a bit more flexible, for example, this one here could sneak into this little spot right here and get myself, uh, you know, four decent actions um, by a simple placement, you know, by getting a water, a gold, another water, and by using that machine. So that's gonna be how the actual placement works in terms of placing it on the main board. But you've also got these different actions that go around the side of the board, which lets you kind of collect resources and cards and different upgrades and so on. So let's talk through them. So if I was to place a machine here, then I would get to collect one of these, um, the, uh, these bigger machines by paying the, uh, the resources. So um, for example here, it's gonna cost me three tools and two coal in order to do so. And, and I'll put this into my kind of supply ready to be placed later. Uh, if I was to go here, it works exactly the same, but you're placing a, a medium sized one. So you've not got the, the kind of the, the big scale of the larger buildings, uh, but they, only, they cost uh, fewer materials. And the small buildings, there's two options to do so, but the second option is a little bit more expensive, uh, you know, if, you, if someone beats you to it. You've also got the ability to draw cards, um, either by drawing one for free, uh, paying a resource to get another, another card, or paying two resources to get two addi additional cards. And they do different things, you know, such as giving you um, abilities to you know, convert gold into a building action, or um, they go convert three, gold, three tools into a, a medium machine. And they give you, you can use those cards as a bonus action once per turn. The spot over here is one of my favorite spots where you get to upgrade your player board. So you would come here and you would select one of these, um, one of these upgrades. So for example, here, I might choose this one by paying the resources on it, so two water in this example. And then I'd place it onto my player board here, like so, meaning that I have this ability for the rest of the game. So here I would be, have the ability to be able to trade in one of these scaffolding pieces in order to take a build action. And I can do that once, uh, once per turn. And, it, uh, and at the end of the game, they'd also grant me additional points. And you have the ability to build six of these upgrades, and once you do so, you're pretty much stuck with what you're left with. Uh, the, uh, the final action you can take, or the, sorry, the second last action you can take, is to actually pick up scaffolding pieces and add them to your supply. So you can either take one for free, you can take two by paying one whistle, or take three by paying two whistles. And you've got three different shapes here. You've got the kind of zigzag shape, the, the T shape, and the L shape. And depending on how many pieces you've got, you're going to put them into your supply. Uh, ready for use later. Now, once you've kind of um, spent your workers or your hot air balloons and you've collected an amount of goods, then you can choose to do this action, forge, and take all your machinery back, like so, putting them back on their respective spaces, 
And then you can choose to take build actions. And in order to do build actions, you the first one you're going to get for free. The second one you're going to have to pay one water. And to get a third one, you're going to have to pay another water. Uh, additionally, you can pay gold to either move these people that start on this rung here um, onto somewhere on the scaffolding. So let's see, I, I do that, which again, I'll explain later. And you can even um, pay two gold in order to move someone out of this whirlpool here. Um, and again, place them on the scaffolding somewhere. And the importance of that is because anybody left in the whirlpool at the end of the game is gonna score you negative five points. Now, something I should have said as well in your player board here is you, you do have a capacity for storing resources. So at any time, you can only ever score, any ever store four of each resource. And if you ever get more than that, then it's gonna be wasted. So you've gotta be wary of that at all times. So that, let's, um, let's have a look at some additional rules about how you're gonna score um, points by building things. So when you, when you start building or contributing to the scaffolds, you can orientate these in any direction you want and place them onto the board. And then you're gonna score a point for every edge of that tile you've just placed, um, what matches up to another. So in this example, I'll score one point, two points, three points, four points. So that's an additional four points I'd have in my kitty at the end of the game. But when I build a machine, um, say for example, you know, when I collected, um, let's say I collected one of these, and I get to place this onto the board, I would do like so, placing it on somewhere where there is, um, you, you can cover up these logos if you want to, and you can even cover up your player pieces. And when you cover up your player pieces, they're going to follow on from the row they were covered up on and get here at the end of the game to eventually get you points. So the higher you get up this track, the more points you're gonna get. And you're also gonna get one of these rosettes, which can give you um, little bonuses throughout the game, you know, such as, you know, whistles or buildings or building actions or pure points and so on. So there are a lot of different things to, um, to weigh up there. And obviously you're trying to get as high as you can to get as many points as you can. Now, the game is going to start coming to an end whenever you start building buildings above this bridge symbol here. And whenever you build a building like I just have, you are going to take this, um, this strip of water and you're going to lay the next one down like so, covering up the bottom, kind of the bottom collar or bottom row of, of actions. And if, if, if there's ever a worker on that spot, then they're gonna end up going into the whirlpool. So let's say I, I built another building and put that on there. This, this worker would end up going into the whirlpool because it's been covered up by water. Now, naturally, when you start building stuff, some of the buildings that you build are gonna get covered in water, meaning, meaning that they are now out of use and not available to use unless you have a certain technology which allows you to do so. So there's this real kind of um, racing of trying to get up the track as fast as you can, not only to get the best kind of ascendancy bonuses here on the side, but um, you don't want to get your workers to drown, which means that they're going to cost you negative points and ultimately start costing you gold uh, in order to get them out of the whirlpool. There is an additional spot here as well, which you can use to um, get rid of these people from the whirlpool, but um, it's going to be a bit slower to do so. And that's basically going to be how the game works until all the water is spent and then points tallied up at the end of the game based on um, how many buildings you've made, um, how many you know, people are in the whirlpool left, the side bonuses here, and, and so on. So that's gonna be the flow of the game. It's pretty simple once you get your head around it. And um, it's, uh, you know, it works pretty, pretty well in terms of rules mechanisms. So let's talk about um, how I actually feel about the game. So first off, I really do like this um, kind of method of constructing the board and the worker placement areas as the game goes on. You know, each game, the, the, the board can lay out completely differently creating you know, more spots and opportunities to collect resources, different machinery comes up each game, and, and so on. So there's a real cool spatial element there, not only for the building and Tetris kind of style, but also the, the fact that your actual workers, the way you collect things, are of different shapes and can't physically fit in certain areas. So I really do like that. I think that works well. You know, I like the, the way that the, uh, the scaffolding tiles fit together and you get points for matching them up. I like having to build higher and higher in order to get your workers into these better spots here. And um, I also really like the, uh, the use of the player boards here. So it has a real nice forward motion where you get more powerful as the game goes on, collecting better and better um, abilities and more abilities, which sometimes synergize with each other. 
Uh, we also like the fact that you have a unique player power, which you know you get a good amount in this book in this game, and they're all just interesting enough to you know to, to keep your interest, but not overly game changing and game breaking that you have to constantly worry about what your opponent can do um, better than you can. But um, yeah, I really like that. I also really like the fact that you can't um, completely stockpile on resources. Uh, you know, having that capacity on your board just keeps it, you know, it's an extra decision to, to weigh up, meaning you can't just keep going to the same spots over and over again, because it would be probably wasteful to do so. Uh, and so on. So there's, there's quite a lot of interesting decisions here. And I like the, um, the ongoing tension as well of having to um, get your workers onto the scaffolding as, and make the most of your buildings before the water starts gobbling up all these spots and ultimately making your, your workers suffer negative points at the end of the game if they are still stuck in that pool. So there's, yeah, there's quite a lot going on here for a relatively simple game. And so in terms of meaningful decisions, there is, there is quite a lot to weigh up. You know, do you want the cards to get a lot of benefit from them? You know, do you want to focus on getting the upgrades early and hopefully that pays off throughout the game? Do you want to build higher and higher and higher and try to get to these really high spots here? Are you going to focus on just get, collecting as much scaffolding as you can and kind of contributing to the actual scaffolding itself to get adjacency bonuses and just by matching up those polyominoes? Uh, are you going to just focus on getting these big meaty buildings that give you a lot of points um, or, you know, or just building lots of little ones that can do you good? So there, there is a lot to think about and all these worker placement spots are valuable. The, the balance of the game as well, I mean, I think you're going you're gonna to dip your toe in all these different fields. Um, you know, naturally, you're going to end up getting higher and higher on the scaffolding because, you know, if you don't start placing your workers down, they're just going to drown, which is quite a, a significant knock on points at the end of the game if you don't do anything about it. But, you know, it's, it's, it's not a game where you can completely deep dive into a certain path or anything like that. It's a, it's a, it really is a, a kind of a wider game where you just have to do everything, really. Um, in terms of the time investment, the game plays, you know, in, in that time stamp it advertises, you know, about 90 minutes, it feels about right for this one. And the, the uptime as well is, is quick. There's not really any, um, there's not too much scope for analysis paralysis or just bogging turns down. Um, maybe when you end up taking the, um, the forge action and you want to do the whole three buildings maybe and pay for your, um, pay for your workers to move up the scaffold and whatever. Uh, and, and of course, if you want to play cards or rosettes as well, that's additionally more time. So sometimes, sometimes can be longer than others, but it's certainly not a game that's um, going to lose your interest or you're going to be bored when it's someone else's turn. Um, the replayability is really good with this one, to be fair. There is lots of buildings, as you can see, and of course, not all of them are going to show up in each game. A big deck of cards, though, with special abilities. The upgrade tiles, there's a whole stack of those, and those are really interesting, in fact. I really do like the way that some of these work. You know, let's take a look at some of them here. You know, so you can convert cards into coal, golds are now a wild resource, and so on. You know, you, whenever you send a worker, um, I think you get an additional ribbon and so on. So there's lots of different things you can go on. And as I said, they do sometimes combine with each other to give you very powerful benefits. So yeah, there's, there's some good variability there. Um, the interaction in the game as well, there is a little bit of, um, you know, getting to places quicker than others. Uh, or other players that is because I said some of these some of these spots become particularly good um, for certain sizes of um, of your workers and getting in there before other players can sometimes be valuable so um, you know for example here you know I might want to if, if the worker wasn't there that spot's particularly good because I can use both machines and use get a tools as well and even get a whistle so some spots do become very inviting and you know even if, if that's starting to benefit one player more than another you can end up just adding to the, um, you know, adding to the uh, scaffolding and trying to maybe nullify it a bit. So I do like that. Uh, aesthetically, I think the game looks nice and bright and vibrant and you know, full of life. I do like the, the graphic design here. It's nice and crisp and clean. Um, you know, a, a different kind of approach to a game like this. You know, these worker placement games are normally a bit more of a, a dusty Euro feel, whereas this one's nice and bright and alive and um, just pretty light-hearted. And I do like the graphic design here. It's nice and um, nice and simple, but it works well. And uh, component quality is really good here. I like the, um, I like, I love the worker pieces. You know, these are nice chunky wooden blocks. The, all the scaffolding fits together well. It all just comes together nicely. You know, the, these, these um, water strips kind of work well as well. So, you know, there's nothing really here that I can complain about. 
you know, the player boards particularly, I really like the way that everything fits together. And just, um, it just, it just, it's just a nice production overall without being completely overdone. And certainly, um, you know, it certainly isn't anything to worth complaining about, even though, even the resources, you know, they all work really well. The only thing I would complain about is that the points themselves um, are tokens and I'd, you know, I'd rather have a score track and you end up just completely just taking so many of these points and converting them to each other and it's a bit of a faff but no real issue there. Uh, the theme is slightly different as well as I said it works with the with the aesthetic of the game this kind of steampunky um, vibe I don't really quite get it but it works and um, the setup and teardown time as well not too much of an issue. Um, you know, just, just setting up the buildings and scaffolding and things. But if you prepare them in their own bags, then it's um, certainly not going to be an issue. Um, the progression in the game, I'm in, I'm in two minds about. So, so first off, I love the way that the board develops as the game goes on. So create, constantly creating new worker placement spots, getting more and more powerful abilities by your upgrades here. So I do like that sense of progression. The only thing that I found in my personal experience is that I find that as the game goes on, it's quite forgiving in terms of giving you loads and loads of resources and you never really have that struggle of trying to build things. Now, maybe somebody else has a different experience for me and it's just the way that things have played out when I've played it. But I found that at, you know, when you kind of meet, reach that halfway slash 75% way through the game, your engine is so efficient that you just end up wanting to constantly build and build and build and build and you, you always have the resources to do so. But you know, maybe because of the layout of the board, it's going to play out differently each time. But just a slight observation I had there. And um, the, the scalability as well works perfectly fine at all player accounts. Um, obviously the board is going to be a bit tighter, but, um, you know, you're going to just building, building the scaffolding wider and um, filling up all those gaps. And comparison wise, yeah, this is a pretty standard worker placement game in a lot of ways, but that extra element of constructing the board as you go, this, as I said, this kind of polyomino mechanism, the, the spatial element just makes this game a step better than the average worker placement games, because I really do find worker placement games are just almost like a rinse and repeat style game where you just stick a different skin on it and uh, maybe change the resources up a bit and it's just the same game over and over again, you know, collect, 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 build. But this one with that extra wrinkle, the extra element of the engine building, I think does take it a step above and um, it certainly does have a certain quality about it, which a lot of these mediocre games don't have. And um, that's, that's it pretty much. I mean, I, I really did enjoy this game. I think it certainly um, warranted the attention it's got in terms of people being surprised about how well this one plays. Um, you know, I love the, the welcoming look of it. It's so, um, it's, it's nice, light and easy to play, but it still has some in interesting decisions. Now, I particularly like this water aspect when you have the pressure of trying to get your workers up and, um, you know, promote them into onto the scaffolding to get end game points. I love the, um, I said they love the engine style here, which you can really focus on getting these cool tiles. So, yeah, it all together, it comes together really well for me. And, um, you know, not traditionally something I would go for or maybe buy myself, but I certainly wouldn't turn down a game with this and would put it so much higher on, on my list of worker placement games than um, a lot of the other titles out there which people seem to love. So I think if you if you want like a, a gateway plus level game, you know, something to take you to that next level, maybe around the weight of Wingspan, then I, I would certainly recommend giving this one a go and I have no doubt that this is gonna be a, a monster hit because it's just, it, it just has all everything going for it really and um, nothing to kind of unwelcome people to it or nothing to there's no real barrier here to prevent lesser experienced players enjoying it but it also it has a lot of things going on it that that's more than enough to satisfy maybe more salty gamers so uh, certainly gets my seal of quality there's okay it's, it's a well put together game um, and takes that work placement level to where it needs to be to keep my interest so that is uh, whistle mountain um, i hope you've enjoyed the review if you have please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.